Jessica Harrington had never had a runner in the Grand National before Magic of Light finished second behind Tiger Roll in the race in 2019. This year, she's back and hoping to go one better. Jesse, if we can go back to 2019 for now, Magic of Light, you'd never had a runner in the Grand National before she ran in the race. How, how, why was that? Because you had so many good handicapped chasers or um, top-class chasers before that. I just don't know. I just never had anything that I thought was suitable. Um, and I just kind of thought she was suitable, even though Robert had told me that she didn't have enough scope to jump around there. Um, but she stayed well. Uh, she just was in the terrific form. So I thought, well, why not let take a chance with her? And like, when did you start thinking that she might be a national horse? Well, not until I scored her over the national fences at the, at the car up before we went there. I knew she'd stay very well. And I knew as long as the ground, and she, she has to have good ground. She does, she likes good ground. She doesn't want firm ground, but she wants, she wants nice ground. Um, and, you know, if she took to them, which she seemed to, I thought, well, you know, horses that take to the entry fences are the ones that run very well around there. And like you said, Robert said that she didn't have the scope for like, but even so, you still went ahead and you, you, you thought she, you or you, at, at the very least, you were hopeful that she'd take to it. Yeah, she loved the ones on the Cara and seemed to jump them very well. Absolutely skipped over them. And so, you know, I just was hoping and I did think it was a great idea. But the morning of the race, when I walked around the track, well, I did realise the fences aren't as big as they used to be. And I thought, oh, what am I doing? She's an eight-year-old mare. She's got a beautiful pedigree. She should probably be gone off to start and having foals. <laughs> and here I am riding her, in the, uh, running her in the national. And she's the only mare in the race. And I think there was one other eight-year-old. Right, so right. I thought, oh, I really am doing everything probably wrong. And she just ran a brilliant race. And in walking the track, did you walk the whole track, walk around? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did, yeah. yeah. I and didn't walk the whole track. I walked it once. I didn't walk around <laughs> twice. And that's above the... Above the uh, <laughs> Above and beyond, that's going. Yeah, but um, her preparation for the race, because as you say, she was she had like she'd won the, the hurdle at Ascot impressively, and like she was a high class mare going to a Grand National. Yeah, she's a you know she, and, and she's a mare that loves travelling. You know, the last last three years we've gone to Newbury and Ascot, and, and then I went to Huntington as well. And in, in twenty nineteen, Robert rode jury duty in the race, but Paddy Kennedy rode Magic of Light. Yeah. He did, uh, uh, Robert had an association with the owner who sadly died of jury duty and he asked me, could he ride her? And I said, of course you can. You know, he was like a, might have been a 16 to one chance. He had a chance, mm -hmm. whereas she was a 150 to one. So I said, no, that's fine. And so watching the race, like, were you nervous watching her in the race? Very, uh, very silent. You know, every fence was, oh, yep, yeah, grand, over that, yep, yeah, grand, yep, yeah, over that. And then when she made the, blunder at the chair and I don't know how Paddy oh, yeah, stayed on her. Very bad, it's like you, they don't come back from a blunder yeah. like that. I, I just thought, oh that's her gone. You know, do, horses don't make, and, but you know, in a way probably it was lucky that the next fence was the water jump. Mm. She got back on keel and she's turning out to go round the second time. She picked up the bridle and tanked away again. I couldn't believe it, like to make a mistake like that mm. and come back from it. Because like most horses were just given up. And, and she was keen for a lot of the race, wasn't she? Oh, she was, she was keen, yeah. She just, every time she landed over a fence, she was looking for the next one. Um, you know, so let's hope she'll do the same again. <laughs> <laughs> so, like going, going down the side of the track. So after making the mistake at the chair, she kind of lost her place a wee bit. So she was in yeah. behind. She went from being in the front rank to just being in behind them. But then yeah. she jumped away back into the front. And then those fences from, from the canal turned Valentine's over the Melling Road. Yeah. Like, what were you thinking then? I was thinking, will she get home? <laughs> First thing, horses often come down to the Melling Road and they're going really well and they end up finishing tenth. You know, and I was saying, sit Paddy, sit Paddy, sit, sit for as long as you can. Um, and then we got down and she was upside, and I could see Tiger Roll going really well. Nothing else, you know, she yeah, was... And Ralph Vinden was travelling well, just in yes, behind you as in well. in behind as well. And I thought, oh, yeah, I don't know, oh, well, listen, let's get over the last. And when she made a plunge, and a lunge at the last. Okay, Paddy asked her. He'd been asking her everything. <laughs> and she gave it all to him, but she got a bit low. Um, I just couldn't help it. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. And then, uh, and then she just stayed galloping the whole way to the line. She was not going to be denied everything. She put her stuck her head down and stayed galloping. Yeah. She gave everything in that race. 
because right. she never came back into the unsaddling enclosure. They wanted to, because she got a bit hot. They wanted to keep her out on the track, and they did. Um, but she just gave everything. Mm -hmm. well, where did you watch the race from? I was watching it was in the friend's box. Along in there was Willie and Jackie, and the owners of, of Rathfinden. And so there was a, you know, I was very silent. <laughs> I wasn't going to say a word because I thought, if I start shouting and screaming around here, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's not going to be very popular. So um, anyway, and then actually Willie asked me, going off the stand, where did you finish? I said, um, second, because I do know that feeling when you're watching your own horse, yeah, you actually yeah. don't notice any other horse in the race if you're watching your own horses. So, look, I was absolutely thrilled with that. Well, were you? like So you've, you're thrilled she's run so well, but yeah. were you a little bit good and you got so close? Uh, no. Right. <laughs> absolutely no. I was just absolutely delighted to be second. And the sad thing was, we had Super Sunday there on the... Um, he'd run on the Thursday for the Potsies. And they hadn't bothered to come back for the Saturday because they said, oh, look, she's 150 to 1 or 120 to 1. You know, what are her chances? I said, well, I don't know. And, of course, then they were gutted that they weren't there to see her. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully that kind of come. The girls are going to come uh, on Saturday. Right. Good. Which would be great. And then last year, of course, there was no Grand National. She was on track for the race again last year, was she? She was indeed very much on track. Yeah. You know, and the problem... Actually, this year, having had her you know, ready to go last year, she went out for the summer, and she actually came back in this year better than ever. I don't know what's been up with her. Uh, you know, at the age of 10, she's in terrific form. And so this season, uh, did you start with the National and work your way back and plan your route there? Yeah, we did. She ran, yeah. and then she went to Newbury to win her, the mayor's chase there, which she did for the third year, which is just sort of a, you know, she's done that very nicely each, each year. Um, and then we kept her on, and ran her in the grade three or grade two hurdle in Ascot, mm -hmm. which she's won the last two years. Uh, she came up against Rusoka this year, yeah. and, you know, who's, she was never going to be, a, mayor, only yeah. a very good mayor, and the only chance we had of beating her if the ground was good, and the ground came up pretty soft, but she ran a very good race to be finished second in that. And then we took her to Cheltenham to run in the mare's chase there, and she got outpaced there. Mm. So it's probably too sharp for her, but it's a, it was a good race. Instead of having to carry a big weight in the Ultima to yeah. go to Cheltenham and run the mare's chase, it's a good yeah. race for her, isn't it? It's a good race, sharpen her up and sharpen up her, her, her jumping. Yeah. You know, she came back out of that really well. So she's, she's 10 now. She's rated 156, I think, which is four or five pounds higher than she was two years ago. But do you yeah. think she has five pounds higher, chance? I think she is. Right, yeah. But she's still just under that elusive 11 stone yeah she's 10 13 so you know from that point of view she's you know she's got a workable weight yeah and do you think she's as well now as she was two years ago i think she is yeah, yeah. she seems to be just as enthusiastic of anything she's a bit stronger than she used to be like you know she's a funny shape mare because she broke her pelvis when she was a five five-year-old right very badly and they said she'd never race again she'd never do anything again they was on the verge of putting her down and me Thanks to John Hyde, who looked after her for three weeks down in Cork. She did in the point of point down there. Uh, we got her back on, on track. And she actually ran six months after she, she had broken it. Uh, but she's a pretty funny shape. But she's got, she's got the attitude, hasn't she? And she's she got an unbelievable attitude. Yeah. Unbelievable. All she wants to do is, is, is please you and do her best. And it's not all about magic of life. You've got Jet going for the race as well. Yeah. Um, he was bought to run in it last year. Sadly, of course, it didn't happen. He just has not had a good year this year on the racetrack, but I think I've got him back in good form. He had a, he had a run over hurdles um, in Turles the other day, and he showed a lot more spark. Um, he did run in the Beecher Chase, and Sam rode him in the autumn. And he seemed to take to the, um, the fences really well. He looked at the first couple and then settled into it and jumped very well around there, but the ground was much too soft for him. So he does. He wants the good, the better the ground, the better he likes it. Yeah, like like because he was right there until the third last in the Beecher Chase, and um, he kind of, I think he made a mistake at Beecher's Brook. He got in a bit tight to that, but then, yeah. then after that, down the side of the track, he seemed to really enjoy the fences. There, mm. you know, he he basically jumped them very well. Um, you know, he he'd given them a nudge. He knew he knows how. You know, horses are intelligent. They know how far they can go down on those fences. Yeah. Um, but look. If the ground's good and he gets a bit of luck, he could he could run very well because he will stay every yard of it. And is that is good ground important to him? Good yeah. ground is important yeah. to him. And the 
where the Cohen bought him. Yeah, to, they bought to him to run in there. Yeah, yeah. So he's a, he's another he's a big probably as big a price as Magic of Light was too. I know ago. he is. <laughs> you just never know. Do you know, things go right with him because he's you know he is a class horse on his day.